On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people were there observing him carefully. In front of him, there was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and Pharisees in reply, asking, Is it lawful to cure on Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man, and after he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, Who among you, if your son or your ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? But they were unable to answer his question. The Gospel of the Lord. It is well known that Jesus often went to the house of sinners, of people who were known to be sinners. For example, he went to the house of Zacchaeus and of Matthew, both tax collectors. This is mentioned because it was conspicuous and created many problems for the Lord, but he did not go only to the house of those sinners. Here we see that he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees, says the text, and this was not the only time he did. What was the difference, at least in this situation, and when he went to the house of Zacchaeus and Matthew of the tax collectors and sinners? The difference was that these people, this chief Pharisee, and his friends, they consider it an honor for Jesus to be invited by them. Whereas Matthew or Zacchaeus consider it an honor for them to have Jesus as their guest, this is an essential difference. For the Pharisees, Jesus was someone inferior whom they looked at with curiosity at best and whom they wanted to treat almost like a sideshow attraction. He was famous, he performed miracles, but he was not of the status. He did not have enough pedigree. He did not have a surname. In other words, he was a Galilean without importance, but since he did interesting things and people followed him, they invited him to correct him, to spy on him, to observe him, even if it was possible to give him wine to lower his inhibitions and try to find something with which to attack him. The others were not like that. They knew that Jesus was a famous and good man, and they considered it a great honor because they also knew the risk Jesus was taking by entering their house. Now, let's think about this in real life. What do we feel when we go to Mass? What do we feel when we receive communion? When we go to Mass and we see that the vast majority of practicing Catholics do not go, we are already very few. In some places the number is really insignificant. Most Catholics are baptized pagans, as Benedict XVI said. So, when we go to Mass and we see that most of them do not go, that perhaps in our house we are the only ones to go, what do we think? What luck does Jesus have with me? The others don't go, I go. How lucky is Jesus with me? And when we go to communion, what do we think? How lucky is Jesus with me? Especially if there are young people. How lucky is Jesus with me? Look at the rest of the young people, how lost they are. And the seminarians. How lucky Jesus is with me. Look at the others. No one wants to be a priest. 
I am in the seminary. How lucky Jesus is with me. And those who try to live their marriage faithfully, how lucky Jesus is with me, Jesus and my wife, Jesus and my husband. I don't cheat on her, while others, how lucky Jesus is with me. And so I could go on giving examples. But this, without realizing it, is the same thing that the Pharisees did. How lucky Jesus is that I have invited him. How fortunate Jesus is. Today he is going to eat with me. Today I have invited him. He should always be the other way around. How fortunate I am, Lord. How fortunate I am with you. I am not worthy, Lord. I am not worthy. It is true. I have not killed anyone. I have not stolen others, kill and steal. If this is true, your grace, my collaboration too, but your grace, Lord. I can take communion. I go to Mass. It is your grace. You have called me to follow you. It is your grace. There is a bird in the Mediterranean area that I do not like at all. It is called the cuckoo. And it is characterized because it does not have nests. It takes advantage of the nest of other birds, of other species, and and when it has made the nest, it goes and removes an egg from that nest and lays its own. They are usually smaller birds, so when the cuckoo chick hatches, the adoptive parents don't distinguish it from theirs, but the cuckoo chick starts throwing the other chicks out of the nest to stay alone and hog all the food. That is pride. Pride is like the cuckoo bird. It feeds on good works. I go to Mass. How lucky Jesus is with me. Pride. I fulfill my obligation. How fortunate Jesus is with me. Pride. I am preparing for the priesthood. Or I am a good boyfriend or a husband. How lucky Jesus is with me. Pride. Pride feeds on good works. And those Pharisees, we should not force it, were very law-abiding people. They were people who really wanted to follow the Lord in their own way. But they had the problem of pride. We must be careful about this more than anything else because pride is the first sin. It is the root of original sin. It is the sin of Satan and it feeds on good works. Every time we do something good, we have to say, how lucky I am that I have been able to do good with the grace of God. It is not Jesus who is fortunate, it is I who am fortunate to be with Jesus. Amen.